Hello, and welcome back to another segment. I guess it's basically merged, but this is a Black History Month segment. And I just wanted to it I just wanted it to be an open and honest conversation with the black athletes that we have at OB. So for starters, what does Black History Month mean to you? Oh, just, Black History Month means to me pretty much is um it's a very important month especially in our lives, uh, especially black athletes, uh, because it's a month that's represented from all the black people in this world that did something for us. And probably the first person to prevent, like, invent something, first person do this, first person do that. And it's pretty much a month of just honoring everybody that we all look up to, we all heard from when we were kids and everybody our parents tell us to leave from. Um, and just being at the University of Texas and also having people that's first from there um is really important amazing to me um uh, love to learn more facts about people I, i'm learning new things every day uh, it was something i had learned I, I don't i don't remember but if i do remember i would say it bring it up but um, how somebody was creating something that i thought somebody else created i'm trying to remember what it was but if it does come to my mind i'll say it but it, it's really important yeah. to me so yeah um, for me, I think uh, Black history for me is like mainly two things. Like first, remembering the past um, as far as like the struggles and adversity that people went through to get us to this point. And then another thing is just appreciating the culture and um, just how much influence we have on the world um, today. It's pretty amazing. And, you know, none of that was capable unless we had somebody you know those strong people in the past that stood up for something that was right and you know had the uh, bravery to make a change and now um you know we got a long way to go but uh just looking at the world now it sees how much of a change that was created and also the influence that we do have now you know on every um race as far as music um style fashion lingo everything you know so it's it's great to see that and just having a month you know it should be all year round but just having a month that actually puts a spotlight on it you know it's pretty important and both of y'all said things like you know just honoring the people who paved the way yeah so in that same sense who influenced you like just who you looked up to growing up or even now mm -hmm. i mean it's a lot of people that um uh... You can obviously say like Martin Luther King, you can say Malcolm X, you can say historic high people up there that everybody know of. But uh, really, I just want to say my family really inspired me first because, you know, there was a lot doing a lot of stuff first in our family. And I, I take that really serious. But mm -hmm. I mean, all the big people that we all learned about since we we're kids um, still inspire me because and Martin Luther King to have his bravery and do what he did, you know, will we still be together like how we, was, how we are now and you know, people like that of creating stuff when we have stuff like that, like peanuts and stuff like that. So I just, um, I really honor, I really respect and um, don't throw no shade and just really just accept and, and love everything that everybody have ever done for us. So I want to say everybody inspired me to be honest, because I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> Keandre, did you say peanuts? I thought that's what I heard. Shit, peanuts, shit, what's the shit? Didn't the Dr. Carver, right? Yeah. Yeah, Keandre, why peanuts. are you cursing? <laughs> Oh, this is live? No, it's not live technically, but like, yeah. <laughs> I ideally wanted that part to be in there about why you were explaining peanuts. <laughs> You're like, what the shit? And I'm just like, okay. I mean, <laughs> okay, I mean, anyway. I, mean, I was just eating peanuts earlier, so that's all, you know. <laughs> Dang, no, it's, va no it's, it's valid, it's valid, it's valid. You know, the black man, it's like, that's just crazy, I mean, you know? <laughs> Go ahead, Jordan. Who influenced you? Um, who influenced me? Well, you know, obviously, we all have the people that made it to like a national scale. You know, they had a really big impact. So, of course, they did. Um, just on a smaller level, I would say the main thing is just Black women in general, just seeing how strong they are and all that they go through. Um, that's one thing that I've seen, you know, that I always appreciate and I, you know, I make sure that that's an important thing in my life, you know, respecting women and ultimately just seeing what women go through, specifically Black women and just how strong they are and resilient is amazing. Another thing, someone influenced me, you know, my dad, of course, and just 
and everyone that's strong you know i get influenced from different categories of things like music you get influences from music you get influences from um athletes you know just seeing people pave the way and showing how successful you can be in this world um those are the people that influence me are either of you first generation to go to college in your family in the way i'll be the first of my dad's children to get a degree he called me and told me that the other day i would say i'll be the first in my family on my whittington side yeah i'll probably say really graduate college uh well i had my auntie graduate and my uncle too but like in my household, I'd be the first of all my my damn sim all my siblings to graduate and get a degree, so I could show them, you know, how to do it and keep going. And what does that mean to y'all to be the first to do that? Whether it's the first one to just graduate and get a certain type of degree, the first one to play a sport in college at a predominantly white university, even mm -hmm. just at our university that's ranked as highest university of Texas. Like, what does that mean to y'all? To be honest, it's crazy because um, I was just thinking about that um, when I was in class on Monday on how, like, I'm still in school where I used to, you know, say I used to hate school, you know, when I was a kid. I remember having a test, but, like, I can't wait till I be done with school. And I used to, you know, I just do not like school. And that's just how I was as a kid. I would rather play games and sleep and watch TV. And the fact that I'm still doing it at the age of 21 um, and have a chance have opportunity to graduate at a a great university that's some people don't even get the opportunity to be at to attend to you know learn and get a degree from I, i'm honored to do that um so that's really mean a lot to me right there is getting a degree but at the same time i really didn't like school but just to do that and really be the first one to do that then playing football while doing school is really like i could just brag about that like i'm at mm -hmm. a hard school to learn and i'm playing football at a great school it's like I could really just brag on that to be honest but I'm, I'm honored I'm happy to just to be in this position and have that um yeah for me I kind of forgot the question so I'm gonna need you to ask me again I forgot it too what was it I did too how does it feel right how does it feel I think how it feels to have I, oh yeah to be okay uh this is gonna be the first I was, yeah, okay, yeah. So how it feels for me, uh, this ain't really a negative thing, but how it feels for me is uh, it shows how much alike communities are, Black communities all around the world as far as um, it's kind of rare uh, in a sense to where all our communities, like our little friend groups that we all go to college and do these things, you know what I'm saying, unless you're an athlete, you know? So um, for me, just a lot of my friends and um, people I grew up with that didn't go to college and all that stuff. That was kind of what was the norm. And it's crazy to think that that's kind of the norm for a lot of communities all around uh, yeah. United States of America. So unless you're an athlete. So that's what's crazy to me. I feel like that's what needs to change. Um, and like you said, predominantly white school, you'd see, I think that uh, the admission, you know, the number for admissions as far as black students needs to be higher, you know, but um yeah, that's what's crazy to me. That's how I feel. I feel like it shows how similar communities are in the sense of what's normal and what's rare. I don't think it should be rare. Like out of me and all my friends, it shouldn't be like, um, and he going to college, you know, because he's playing football. It should be like, we all going, like we all gonna leave high school. We all gonna go here. It shouldn't yeah. stop after high school. And that's how it is for a lot of people. And I don't think it's that far. What challenges do you face being an African American student athlete at UT? Uh, we only hear because of our talent. That's the main one. Uh, we're not smart. Uh, we really don't care about stuff by ourselves. You know, you hear a little stuff like, and that's just on the athlete part. And you know, I don't know how it feels to actually be a black student that just actually got a set. Yeah, good point. I can't. Go ahead, Dean. And I just, I can't, I can't, you know talk about that because I don't know how they actually feel and, and towards that because I feel like I, I show them some love because you actually got accepted at a hard university which are, with also your skin color and you're still doing it and you graduated University of Texas man that's big props like like you know pat on the back for y'all because y'all actually did it y'all actually proved me you know, I got here I'm not saying the easy way or easy path because I got here from athletic ability um, football 
And then I just had to make a certain GPA to get my, you know, to be accepted in the school and just continue doing what I'm doing. But them people right there really should, you know, we have an interview right now because they're the ones that really worked hard to get at the University of Texas. But I can't elaborate on, like, I can't talk about them and how they feel and how they're getting treated. But for us, it's just, uh, we're here because of our talent. Uh, we're not smart. We really don't care, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. Jordan? Kind of got this, the same answer. Uh you want me to like elaborate on that? Uh, if you have anything to add. No, nah, just, you know, like he said, uh, being a student athlete playing football here, you know, you hear those things and you're also just praised because you play football here. You know, would that be the same when you're done playing football here? I don't know because I'm not there yet, but uh, just being a regular student at UT, you know, I'm pretty sure it is more difficult. And I do have friends that are just students at UT. Um, and yeah, I can just, you know, there's certain things that as an athlete, certain privileges that you do get that other people don't. And yeah, um, I don't think it's fair, but I mean, that's kind of how it goes. But yeah, it's kind of hard to answer as far as being just a black student at UT when you're on the football team, you know? Yeah, it is tough to answer. And I mean, that's one of the main reasons why I asked it because, and that was a point that I was going to get into later on. Do you guys feel like y'all are in this athlete like safety bubble? And at what point has it kind of been shed a little bit? You know, and you've seen people's real views of you outside of athletics. Have you when, ever when you, yeah, when you come across somebody that doesn't know you as the football player, you know, not mm -hmm. everybody in the world knows us. So when you do come across them, you kind of see the difference compared to when you uh, walking on campus and just, you know, see somebody that obviously knows who you are and just having friends that aren't athletes, you know, and that fit those little, I don't even know the word, but, you know, of how a person would look if they were a negative person, you know, like just, it's, it's really not a, it's really lame to be honest. And I don't know, I just, I'm not, I'm totally against it, but I mean, I play football and this will come with it. So it's yeah. going to be like that for a while, you know, people praise, or not praise, but you know, you get privileges if you are a athlete or um, popular in some way, you know, you get treated a little bit differently and that's the way it is nowadays, but you see it um, when you come across people that aren't familiar with what you do or, you know, you play a sport or you're a musician, rapper, whatever you are, but mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's not really, a, it's not, it's not a good thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be the students that pretty much just, always got some smart stuff to say and I was going to say we like say we was like that week was supposed to be like a very good, important game or something like that and we lose and then you got them haters in class like you hear them start saying stuff I went to professors like you know oh Keandre's in class how you doing you know uh, hope y'all win this weekend you always got people always saying side stuff like why they always getting praise and stuff they're not even winning or stuff like that so I think those be the haters right there I always got something to say about it that's a lot of haters yeah, you in the room with you in the room with one right now. Uh, you, you. Oh, you talking about Joe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who? Who's it for? Hey, Joseph. Come say hey, Joe. No, come say hello. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, sorry. Like Joe. Like Joseph, like the one I interview? Yeah. Oh, hey, Joe. Y'all right. um, made it weird now. But um, okay, moving on. I definitely wanted to. Hey, Joseph. It's your boy. How are you? Big Joe. Hope you're doing what a, well. What a, uh... Hey, why are you, why are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yes, you guys brought up really, really good points about just people seeing you guys differently. Like if you guys are not winning every single game, then the whole you're a football player like that, the popularity just kind of sheds a little bit. And people tell you how you really how they really feel about it. I say that just speaking from experience, when I saw it being done was when COVID came and then we didn't have a season. And then at the same time, the marches were going on down in um, downtown Austin. You know, everybody's going to have their different viewpoints on that. But seeing some of the viewpoints on social media were coming from Texas fans was really surprising to me because I kind of felt like, well, I thought y'all supported us. 
until it's time to support us. And then it became they're, a different yeah, type of they're they're supporting the team. Yeah. And yeah. that that was a big reality check to me that they're supporting what you do. They don't support necessarily you. Obviously it doesn't go for all, but for some. But moving on, do you feel like in into that point, do you feel like if you speak up and in, do you feel like you can speak up when there are things that happen in this world? Like use your own platform. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has a chance to say what they want to say because at the end of the day, it's a free country. Like you, anybody can say anything. Like I can post right now who I hate, and you know, some people look at it, some people actually take knowledge from it. But in certain situations, you can say whatever you want to say. Doesn't mean people want to want to listen. And I think people only listen when it's really, you know, when it's really very important. Or people feel like having time to talk back, um, especially in the stuff you were just talking about, like. We had people support us, but was they really supporting our actions and what we felt actually going down when we want to start stuff down? You feel me with the songs and stuff like that? But I mean, it is what it is, and you can't really control everybody's actions and how everybody else feels. I mean, that's just life, and that's how I live life to where, like, it, it is what it is. Like, you know, I know what I want, and I know what I care, and I know what I say about but pretty much stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, You definitely can say whatever you say. There's always going to be... Uh, backlash to some things you say or consequences but um i mean if you feel what's right you should probably say that you know i've never been the person that's been scared to say something because i feel it's right but um at the same time you have uh certain people just change how they view you so i mean you just got to be ready for that <laughs> but i mean if you really mean it and it shouldn't matter and even with the platform like it's like say you got like ten thousand followers pretty much you see every time you post a football picture you know everybody looking at that and liking that you get seven thousand likes or something like that like you know and then when you post something about something that's really important then you probably get 50 likes or yeah that's true that just shows you the people that really like what they're really looking and following you for and i mean I, and i've seen that a lot of times where like some people feel like our platforms are just used for football which shit to be honest it's kind of is you know because that's all they care about us they don't care about nothing else they don't care about hearing us talk about how we feel and how we how we want to start stuff to change is not really important to them. It's only important if we win it, we looking good, we represent the team, we're doing stuff right. That's all they care about. Now, how tough is that <clears throat> to have that stigma over you when what we talked about earlier was when you leave, you know, UT's campus, even sometimes just going outside of Austin, you're not going to be recognized on the street as, mm -hmm. you know, Keandre Coburn, the football star. You know, so then when you have those certain views, do you think that they're looked at as differently because they're looking at you then just as a black man, not as a UT football player? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's viewed different uh, because, you know, a lot of people have a lot of connects, especially in this world, especially in a profession that we're trying to get to. Um, it's a lot of people that have a lot of say so's and you say the wrong thing that that can really affect you and your future and so sometimes it's good to just well i don't think it's good but sometimes it's not good to always say what you want to say at the right at certain moments because you never know what you're gonna mess up and i think that's bad to even have because i feel like if i feel a certain way i should be able to say it but again that's just how this life is run and this is how this life is to where you can't control everything um which i wish i could and i wish the world was a better place to where we could have that, you know, feel me? So you know, everybody have to feel unsafe and feel worried about what they're going to say and it's just going to affect them. But yeah, that's pretty much what I could say. Like Keandre said, um, you know, having connections, you know, when you leave here, that's, I mean, that's the main thing. A lot of people tell me just use the school like they're going to use you. And I think that's uh, one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give people because, you know, when you do leave here and whenever football is over, you know, that time is, uh, that factor changes depending on who you are, but um, when it is over, you're gonna need uh, something to do after that, you know? So just having the connections, I feel like this is the best university for that, you know, just getting connected, networking, and having people in your life that'll help you in terms of like longevity. But um, yeah, when you're done with football, it's not gonna be, you know, as easy, you know, you're not gonna get shortcuts and stuff like that. So you have to have, those people that are genuine really care about you beyond football, you know, more as a person and not what you're doing. So, yeah. yeah. And do you feel like you're held to a different standard compared to your non-Black teammates? 
like just in the outside world a different that's standard deep. that's a deep that's deep because I, I feel like the standard is pretty much saying like you know if you look at teams in this world who or what color is mostly on the team if you think about that mm -hmm. and then when you bring it in and you know if you're not running the fastest you know the other dude then why you here you feel me like we brought you here for a reason that's just a different talk right there but I mean, everybody have standards, so I, I can't just not just go on our and just say blacks, but I feel like everybody does have a standard. Everybody has a role to play. So that's what I could really say about that. Hmm. Okay, so I asked the question in terms of if you were to do something that you weren't necessarily proud of at the university, would you be held on a different standard than your other non-black teammates you know what i mean mm -hmm. mm. oh is it harder on you <sighs> now if it, i feel like if it was something separated from the team then yes because that's how it is pretty much everywhere you know mm -hmm. when you compare those two things but okay. as far as the football team um i feel like if it was up to a coach i think he would hold us to like an equal it would be equal. But now if we was outside and something happened that involved, you know, like police and stuff, do I think it would be different? Yes, for sure. That's all I got. Okay. okay. But I, I don't want to say, I don't want to say that it would be different because I, I haven't come across a situation yet in the team to where there's been something bad happening. Um, I've been treated different. You know, mm -hmm. just because <laughs> predominantly the starters on this team are what color, you know, so it ain't really uh, as far as the football team, I don't really see it there. But when I do go to the outside world and you see it all the time, I mean, I've had it firsthand happen to me. So, yeah, but I don't think, yeah. Me too. Okay. Yeah. So, like, football team, no. As far as out in the, you know, society, in the real world, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. Okay. And last question. We all know you guys as Jordan Whittington, the Texas wide receiver, you know, Keandre Cover and the football player. We know you guys as that. Oh. What do you want to be remembered as? Jordan Whittington, the amazing, beautiful soul and spirit, and just amazingly beautiful. <laughs> I want to be remembered as the happiest person ever to live. I just want to be remembered as. Uh, a, a person that that love life, you know. What I mean, I live life to the fullest. Uh, hey. Funny, enjoyed everything, enjoyed every moment. Not you know really what I'm saying, it. not caring about what people yeah. think I should be doing because I, I do what I want to. That's the biggest thing I need. I do what I want. You know what I'm saying? When I want, I stay in my boundaries. But when if I want to do something, I do it. If it's gonna make me happy, I do it. That's There's how. No like, point that's is, how it's no point of like holding things. I feel like I just do things that I want to do because I mean. I've been raised like that. I've been growing up like that. I've been thinking like that, feeling like that. And everything I do is because well, I want to do it. And, and don't ever want to be forced to do anything. So yes, I was going to be known. And, and, and also, you know, a great football player, a great leader, a great person. Um, if I could, if, if I bet you if any poll or somebody asks about how I am in class, any class, I'm good. Uh, student yeah. likes me, shit. <laughs> student likes me. Um, I just like to make everybody around me happy. You know, even if you look sad, you mad, I'm gonna make you smile some type of way. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, that's just how I am. So just, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. What about you? Both sound like, what, about what about me? You? Yeah. Well, when I was graduating from UT, I didn't want to just be known as Serenity, the track person. And that's why I joined the clubs that I joined. You know, I wasn't no scrub in track, but that's why I joined the clubs I joined made sure my GPA was always on point because I prided myself on being more than an athlete. And I didn't want to sit down my resume. I didn't want any track accomplishments in my resume. I wanted them to see everything else that I accomplished. The fact that I was able to have a 4.0, the fact that I was able to join this club, be the NAACP, this, the, that. I wanted to basically be known as the one who got the most out of going to Texas. Yeah. And I feel like I did that well. <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> there's that. But thank y'all for having an honest conversation. I know it can be tough, especially when you guys are still, you know, the shackles of the NCAA and the team. But 
it was a good conversation. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas Football YouTube channel.